Earlier this week, Fed Chair Jerome Powell spoke about a weakened housing sector as the Fed raised rates once again Wednesday. Inflated mortgage rates have cooled buyer demand, pushing a market toward a much needed rebalancing act. But a new home will still cost you a pretty penny. Buying a new house today means shelling out a mortgage payment 62% higher than a year ago and 46% higher than the start of this year alone. With more on where we're headed, we're joined by Zillow Chief Economist Skylar Olson. Skylar, nice to see you. How do you expect this second straight 75-point hike will impact the housing market? You know, moving forward, and we're thinking about mortgage rates impact on housing markets the most when we're thinking about the Fed activity. You know, I think it's reasonable to assume that mortgage rates are going to bounce around five and a half moving forward. You know, after the Fed made their announcement and lifted the Fed funds rate again, we actually saw mortgage rates trend down. Now, a reason for that is, you know, the flight to safety that comes when we start experience heightened levels of recession risk. I think that was the market's response in many ways to what uh, the chairman, you know, said in that announcement um, is that we would go through a period of slower than normal growth moving forward. That flight to safety put downward pressure on mortgage rates despite the Fed's action to otherwise lift the Fed's fund rate. So moving forward, I would expect, you know, mortgage rates to continue to cycle around this new higher level. So Skylar, what sort of domino effect does that have then on rental properties and rents? Right. So as the challenges for home buyers start to increase at this, you know, higher uh, interest rate environment, we will see more people remain in rental markets for longer. Right. They'll have to save up uh, or, you know, downsize expectations in order to access uh, home ownership with a lower debt load in order to avoid, avoid the impact of higher rates. And so that means you rent for longer. You know, a lot of the challenges for home buying is one of the reasons that we saw home price growth or rather, excuse me, uh, rental growth in single family markets uh, so aggressively, right, so strong over the course of the pandemic was much because there weren't enough options in the for sale market. So yeah, rental markets moving forward will continue to experience strong demand. Uh, though we do see early stages of rent uh, slowing down from maybe the high highs, I think moving forward, we still expect a lot of pressure in that market. Hey, Skylar, we have that figure up on the screen right now, rent surpassing 2000 for the first time according to right. your data when we're when we're comparing renting versus buying how does a typical monthly rent stack up right now to a mortgage uh, payment you know because of higher mortgage rates this is probably one of the first times, not necessarily this month, but just, I mean, over the last few months where it wasn't guaranteed that your mortgage payment would be lower than what you could otherwise rent it for. In different metropolitan areas across the country, whether or not the typical mortgage payment or the typical rental payment, if you're matching up the same kind of home, right? So similar, you know, single family housing, that kind of thing, where one is higher than the other, it absolutely depends on where you are in the country, uh, but it's starting to get close. You know, that mortgage payment now takes up 30% of your income uh, because we're at this higher uh, interest rate level. And we haven't seen that uh, since 2006. Um, so that's, um, you know, these two options uh, are balancing out uh, from where they were in an extreme low interest rate environment. And if you're one of the millions that were forced to the sideline over the last two years, you're yeah. seeing mortgage rates creep up, but you're seeing prices right. come a little bit down. Is this a time to buy or continue to wait this one out? You know, whenever you're thinking about buying your home and you're thinking about timing it, you know, any expert should be advising you not to try and time the market. You know, predicting mortgage rates into the future is not something anyone can do, right? It's an uncertain uh, practice over the next six months. The way that you should be thinking about it as an individual is to be watching the homes that are available to you that you can afford. Try and make sure that any home that you do move on is one that's going to match not just the you now. Now, but the you into the future, because finding a property, buying that home and turning home ownership into, say, a financial advantage um, is much more possible if you plan on staying. And that has to do with large upfront costs, uh, but it also has to do with different advantages that mortgage homeownership offers like leverage. But that was impacted by higher rates. So that period of time where you're expecting stability might be a little bit longer. Um, but that's the thing about home buyers. They tend to be the kind of household that is moving for that reason. So we still expect a lot of people to be interested, but when shopping, 
when is the right time? Well, it's when you find the house that's going to work for you and you can afford it and you would be confident you'd stay over an extended period of time. And in terms of the distribution of some of these homeowners, obviously we saw a lot of people perhaps moving to the suburbs, trying to get a bit more space during the pandemic. But what are you seeing in yeah. terms of, say, the luxury market versus, say, lower yeah. priced homes and the shifts you're seeing there? Yeah, you know, we did a recent analysis to try and look at whether or not the slowdown was much faster in one segment in the market. You know, yeah. as we're at the kind of the transition point, um, maybe that's why we're not seeing anything really good and truly jump out. Uh, and maybe we'll start to see more obvious trends in the months to come. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, just looking and applying, you know, intuition from economics onto the situation, you know, uh, there is a lot of pressure on affordable homes. So on the lower segment of the market, you might uh, not expect it to slow down as much. Higher end buyers also tend to be more financially sophisticated. And while their affordability might be not be as impacted by interest rates, um, their financial decision making um, might be right. The advantages, the leverages uh, are, are less, things like that. Um, so trends Transitioning forward, we definitely are seeing new construction uh, and the demand for new construction falling much faster. And that does tend to be in a higher price point. Um, luxury homes always take a long time to sell. So it's a harder time. It's harder to see movements uh, as much in that market. Skylar Olson, always great to have you. Zillow Chief Economist. Have a great weekend.